Tesla stock had a great day today, but it's probably going to get better coming tomorrow. Now, I hate these short term predictions. Honestly, I do, but I still give them because I like to share my opinions, share my thoughts. I personally love when people share their opinions as well. Of course, you're subject to be wrong. Things can go sideways and black swan events can happen and unforeseen things come. But I think opinions are the only thing of value here in finance YouTube. You guys can find the data yourselves. You guys can tell when Tesla is bullish or bearish for the most part. And the news, well, that helps too, and I like to cover that. But I think tomorrow could be the most important CPI report in all of 2024. And I'll share that with you right now. It's simply because either a blip as as Jerome Powell says, or a longer kind of uptrend in inflation has started. One of the two. And you've kind of thrown out this disinflation narrative with the markets pushing out the rate cuts. And that was because of January and February's inflation numbers. Well, three months usually confirms a trend. And if March's inflation report comes in hot, it's going to confirm that maybe the Fed should think about raising rates or not cutting rates at all in 2024. To the contrary, if inflation comes in light, then maybe your seasonal adjustments for inflation for January and February, typically this happens every year, were actually the cause of the hotter than expected inflation reports. This could mark a pivot point for investors and the way that they are allocating capital in our markets and ultimately the direction that the Fed takes the markets, right? The Fed has the opportunity to totally rug pull the markets or be super bullish for markets. And I think a lot of that comes down to the inflation report coming out tomorrow. So, do me a quick favor and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you like my opinions or or just value opinions really is what it comes down to. Do you value opinions or not? If you do, hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel. If you like Tesla's stock, hitting the like button as well and subscribe to the channel probably will do, do you some good. We keep you up to date on Tesla's stock each and every single day. Now, the first thing I want to point out is, again, Tesla had a great day today. Tesla's stock was up almost 2%. The markets were pretty volatile, up and down, especially in the beginning and end of the trading day. Now, as I said in the last video, this is really the first time you're getting confirmation um, since back here on February 15th that you're actually likely to hold that 200-day moving average. Why I'm saying that is because Tesla stock bounced on the penny at this 20-day moving average. When you see a bounce right at the penny of the 200, the 200, I always like to say 200, 20-day moving average, this yellow line here, it's usually pretty strong confirmation that you found support at that level and you're likely going to go higher from here. Now, as I said in the last video, the 20-day moving average is really seen as a trend. 20-day um, moving average, if you get above that and you find support like you've seen today, and you actually got above that yesterday, but you're finding support today, when this happens, it confirms you're likely going into an uptrend. Now, it doesn't tell you much about the duration of the upturn or the, the path ahead. But it does say you're more likely to be bullish going ahead than not. Sometimes when you cross the 20-day moving average, you can rally hundreds of dollars in Tesla stock. Sometimes you rally 20 or 30 or 40 dollars. Sometimes it's smaller. Sometimes it's larger. But typically, you do get a move anywhere from 20 to 200 dollars higher after you show this kind of respect at that 20-day moving average. Now, ha. Huh. Lo and behold, tomorrow is a very important day for Tesla stock and for the markets. I would argue the most important day of all of 2024. Again, back to the point. Is this recent bump in inflation just a bump, as Jerome Powell suggests it is? Or is it a trend of inflation going higher? That's going to make the world of a difference for markets. And I've explained my stance on this a couple of times. So I don't want to fixate on this 
too much. There's many other things we need to go over, like positioning in Tesla, what the shorts did today, option activity, and where I think Tesla stock is going, among other things. But I pointed this out already in prior videos. It is the ISM services prices. Now, this is core PCE month over month the one that really matters to the market. CPI, it matters because it feeds into PCE, but PCE, core month over month, that is your most important metric of inflation to be watching. And you've seen a plummet here. Now, I should say these tend to correlate because what actually happens in the economy is the Fed targets a 2% inflation rate. But if you look at goods inflation, Goods actually tend to fall in prices over time. Your TV gets cheaper. Your iPhone gets cheaper. Basically, everything tends to get cheaper over time. Services tend to get a lot more expensive over time. So I believe it's like um, 4% inflation for services is what we've seen over time and 2% deflation for goods over time. So it balances out to roughly 2% inflation over time. Now, ISM services prices is the best metric to look at for service inflation. And you just hit levels you have not seen since the bottom of the Rony Rona crash. During this moment in time, core PCE inflation back in April of 2020 came in at negative 0.3% month over month. Now, do I think a negative number is coming for inflation? No. Tomorrow, obviously not. Things like oil and food, car insurance wouldn't surprise me if that's still running hot, are likely to offset some of the gains you've seen in services. But service inflation has really been the stickier group of inflation. And if you start to get services coming down, really the last thing left is going to be housing. And that's just going to take some time to work out. So long story short, ISM services prices tend to correlate tick for tick with inflation. So if services go up, inflation tends to go up. Or service prices go up, inflation tends to go up. If service prices fall, well, inflation tends to fall. And that's probably going to happen tomorrow. Based on this ISM service prices data that we got for March, your March CPI report, your core, it's probably going to come in really good. Now, Here's the expectations for core tomorrow. They're pretty dang high. Core month over month is expected at 0.3%. Last month, you came in at 0.4%. So you're expecting a, a deceleration in inflation, uh, at least the markets are. And then core year over year is expected to come in at 3.7%. Um, last month, you came in at 3.8%. Now, I think you could come in a lot less than this. And how it works is you see 0.3. You, you'll see 0 0.4, 0 0.2. You'll see round numbers. That's because there's rounding in these CPI reports. So the number actually comes out as a decimal point, like 0 0.11, 0 0.22, 0 0.33, and they get rounded. So for an example, if you come in at 0 0.34 tomorrow, 0. 3, 4, you're going to get rounded down to 0 0.3. But the markets, they look at that, right? They look at whether it was, you know, 0 0.34 or 2.5 that got rounded up to 3. So a round up or a round down. Obviously, a round down, not as great. A round up is not as bad, even if the headline comes in at 0 0.3, but maybe inflation really came in at 0 0.25 right? Ho hopefully that makes some sense. Hopefully I'm doing a good job explaining that. I feel like I am, but if you have questions down below, uh, let me know. So if inflation comes in at 0 0.15 month over month, you're going to get revised up to 0 0.2. It's not going to look like you came in super low, but in all reality, that would be very low. Now, if you come in at 0 0.14, you're going to get revised down to 0 0.1. That would also uh, look really good, even though it's maybe not as good. So you actually want to see what the number itself comes in as, because again, you're expecting 0 0.3. 
So that means Wall Street analysts are really expecting anywhere from 0.25 to 0.34. On the higher end range, not good. On the lower end range, really good. If you come in lower than that at 0.2, 0.21, and you get rounded down to 0.2, that's great. If you come in less than that, like a 0.14 and get rounded down to 0.1, that would be sweet news for markets. As I said, there has been pressures like oil, like energy, like food and car insurance, used prices for cars still being stubborn, housing inflation is still being stubborn, although we have seen Zillow rent um, rent trackers and realtor rent trackers and, and, and other indicators suggesting that real rates or real rates for um, rents are falling. That hasn't been presented in the data just yet. Maybe some of that starts. The other important part to point out is The components of CPI are important. The last two months, the markets, they paid attention to inflation, but apparently the last two inflation reports, they've been in areas that are more seasonally adjusted in January and in February. So the markets didn't freak out much. If you recall, the last inflation report that we got for the month of February, stocks actually went up like one and a half percent that day. They didn't care about the hotter than expected inflation report. And I mean, that's a possibility. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say it's not a possibility. If inflation comes in hot, markets could still do well. But three months usually confirms a trend or breaks a trend. And in my opinion, inflation could come in as low as 0.15. Now, 0.15, 0.15 would get rounded up to 0.2. That's what the number would look like on the headline. But the algos big money, they're going to look at the decimal and they're going to say, yeah, that's a really good report. If I'm correct, obviously I could be wrong, right? Uh, Maybe it comes in at 0.24, still gets rounded down to 0.2. That would still be likely, uh, you know, really good news. If you come in at 0.25, again, one point higher than 0.24, you're going to get rounded to 0.3. The markets might still take that as really good news because of the decimal point. You're technically like 0.25% inflation, not 0.3. So I think the headline numbers, you want to be very careful tomorrow um, just reading that and going off of it. Obviously, if you come in at like 0.4, there's no help in that. That means you came in at 0.35 or higher, and that would obviously be uh, bad news. So That's the most important part of tomorrow. You will also get your headline month over month, expecting that to come in at 0.3. I think that's likely appropriate given, you know, including food and energy. Markets are not going to care about the headline inflation number. It's all about core month over month. And uh, your year over year headline is expected to actually rise from 3.2 to 3.4%. Again, that's something we already expect because your year over year comparisons get a lot harder. You're also going to get the FOMC minutes coming out at 2 p.m. tomorrow. That's basically a transcript of like the last Fed meeting, what they talked about, how they made their decisions. It typically causes uh, some kind of move in the markets, but it's usually not a huge move. It's usually not like uh, you don't get new information out of the Fed minutes most of the time. Most of the time, the markets are like, yeah, it's kind of same old, same old. We already got the Fed meeting. We already know this. Sometimes algos respond to it, but it's probably not going to do much. By 2 p.m. tomorrow, markets are going to be in full-on crash mode or full-on bull mode. And I think the bull is likely going to win out here. I think the ISM service prices, that's too hard to ignore. I mean, you, you are five points lower than December of 2019. You are almost seeing deflation in service prices. You're getting pretty close here. Anything under 50 would be considered deflation. So I think at least for the month of March, you're in the clear most likely for the inflation report coming out tomorrow. Now that is very important because guess what? You have over $6 trillion currently sitting in money market funds. That is three NVIDIAs. That is 
10 Teslas, more than 10 Teslas, like the market cap value added times 10. That is three and a half Russell 2000s. That's a lot of money. And if the disinflation narrative continues as kind of the narrative was from July through December of 2023, if markets can say we're still on that path and, you know, maybe the number comes in really good. Who knows? We we, we could all speculate. Um, Markets could see a lot of inflows coming tomorrow. And that could be a moment people really start to allocate back to sectors of the markets that have not participated in 2024. Everyone said, oh my gosh, 2024 has been great. S&P and NASDAQ, they're hitting all-time highs. Fantastic. In fact, that's a bunch of BS. Okay, let's be honest. Tesla hasn't done well. Interest rate sensitive names haven't done well. Small caps haven't done well. You know Fubo? Fubo TV? Small cap stock? Like a $500 million market cap? Yeah, I, I own some Fubo. Okay, that stock went from $3.50 to start this year after this November to December rally where you've seen the percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average hit as high as 86%. Today, you're at 57%. That stock is now $1.60. It's down like 50% in 2024 and you haven't got any bad news. The you know ESPN, uh, uh, Disney partnership, the whole bundling sports together. That, that is really nothing to be concerned of with Fubo, but nobody wants to own it. SoFi has went from $9, 10 $11 per share down to 7 Crocs, uh, they've recently done well, giving some back over the last couple of days. Point is, the average stock, the interest rate sensitive names, have not done well. And that's because you started off 2024 pricing in 6 to 7 rate cuts. And now, let's take a look. How many rate cuts are you pricing in? For the De- for the December Fed fu- Fed uh, Fund futures contract, you're pricing in one, two, three cuts still. It's pretty close to pricing in only two. And tomorrow's inflation report is going to change these numbers dramatically. If inflation does come in good, you're going to start pricing in four. If inflation comes in bad, you're going to start pricing in two, maybe one cut. Um. So you went from pricing in six or seven cuts to three. That's got cut in half. So what's happened for firms that need to be allocated to markets? They have had to, uh, you know, put their money into areas of the markets that are going to put up, you know, decent or stable EPS or, or growth to EPS, like your big tech names, and those companies that don't need to finance debt, that are doing buybacks, that started to issue dividends, like a meta. You've seen a lot of pooling into the upper threshold, upper tiers of the markets, your big tech names, your magnificent seven, if you will, if we're still using that 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 analog. And it's just sucked the life out of other areas of the markets, including small caps. And now small caps, they've done decent because SMCI and some of these other semiconductor names have been um, you know, heavy contributors to that. But look at the Russell. The Russell is primed for a breakout. Absolutely primed. The thing looks gorgeous as far as a potential breakout here. Bullish wedge, if if you get above about 208, looks great. You're above your 50, 100, 200 day moving averages. Let's see where that 20 day moving average is. I had it up here. One, The Russell was above it. Let's just double check and make sure it is um yes the last two days you found support at this 20-day moving average same thing there right and last time you broke out above the 20-day moving average was back here in november of 2023 what happened the russell went absolutely parabolic in this time frame so as long as you can stay above this the data comes out good tomorrow I think Tesla, small caps, interest rate sensitive names are going to go buck wild. Let's just put it like this. If you get the Fed that is not bullish, you get inflation coming down, you get a strong economy, you start to price in more cuts. Tesla specifically has the rubble tax event coming on August 8th, earnings coming on August 23rd, which are likely not going to be great, but Tesla is going to forecast, um, you know, Uh, focusing more on profitability. You mix all of this together for Tesla, 
you have a bullish cocktail on your hands. And uh, I, I, I guess I should mention that everyone's super bearish on Tesla right now. A lot of even retail investors are bearish. A lot of people have sold out. They've hedged for the downside. I mean, look at the put-to-call ratio on Tesla. I mean, if, if nothing tells you anything about sentiment, I think the put-to-call ratio does because it's just arbitrarily looking at the options that are held on the options chain. And you are at the highest put-to-call ratio, meaning this is the most puts you've seen relative to calls, about a one-to-one -one ratio, since back here, September of 2022. Okay, that's kind of wild. So throughout all of this, even when Elon was selling stock, there was a lot more uh, put protection out there in Tesla. And to be at a one-to-one -one ratio or pretty close to for calls to puts held on the options chain is that's that's very historically bearish for Tesla. You can also see on stock twits, sentiment today is neutral at 49. Technically a little bit more on the bearish side as well. 50 is exactly neutral. So 49, a little bit less than exactly neutral. Message volume today is high at 55. Yesterday was normal at 52. And the participation ratio is at 55 today, categorized as high. And why I like to look at this is, is because it's showing you more or less retail investor sentiment. And we know retail uh, is very finicky. Bad news comes out and everyone gets bearish. Good news comes out and people get bullish. You just had the RoboTaxi announcement for August 8th and the writing is on the wall for Tesla to become more profitable and the writing is also on the wall for uh, a better than expected inflation report tomorrow, yet retail still bearish. I think there's a good chance that inflation comes in low tomorrow and you start to shift some of the sentiment around Tesla because again, let's be honest, Tesla is by definition, by business model, the most interest rate sensitive name out there. Tesla doesn't need to go out and raise fresh capital all of the time. They typically don't. What Tesla has employed recently is selling leases, like bundling up leases, selling those instead of just, you know, getting their money back slowly. They kind of get it up front, sacrifice a little bit of yield for the upfront capital. Who cares? Tesla's not going out and they don't need to uh, raise capital. So they're not interest rate sensitive in that way, but about 80% of their business is dependent on interest rates, is dependent on people being able to finance vehicles. Financing costs are through the roof. That's obvious. You and I, we all know that. So that is the biggest factor that is weighing on Tesla's demand right now, that is weighing on Tesla's deliveries. And all automakers are feeling this, but automakers, besides Tesla for the most part, besides other more or less EV startups like a Rivian or a Lucid for that matter, they work on dealership models. So what happens? You're heading into the summer season. What are dealerships doing? They're ordering from GM and Ford and uh, these their other you know parent automakers. So what happens? Their deliveries look a lot better than in all reality what they are. And then what you'll start to see as you get deeper into summer is less ordering um, from GM and Ford and Toyota, the like, Honda, Kia, all of them. It, it, it works for all of them. If interest rates start to fall, then you're going to get a much healthier auto market. And some of those fears that Tesla deliveries are going to come in really low start to go away. So all around the board, there's nothing negative that comes out of a better than expected CPI report. And then again, mix in there. I think Tesla is going to be giving us some good news on earnings on April 23rd and the RoboTaxi Network on August 8th. That announcement could possibly open up the door for Tesla to be looked at as an AI stock. I think I'm uh, actually pretty conservative with expecting what I'm expecting. If I'm correct, if we do get a better than expected CPI report tomorrow, Tesla could likely go into the 190s. Yeah. If if I'm correct, and again, my estimate is 0 0.15 for core PCE month over month, that would get revised up to 0 0.2. So it's going to look like 0 0.2 on the face value. But big money, Wall Street, they look at the actual decimal and they're going to sit there and say, 0.15, that's a really good number. 
Tesla does go into the 190s, that would be about an 8% move tomorrow. Now, that would be if inflation comes in like really good, like really, really, really good. Um, and, you know, maybe I shouldn't reference it in like a one day move. But I do think over the next couple of days to get like a 5%, 4% move back to back on really good inflation numbers, get into the 190s by the end of this week, closer to about 200, would make a whole lot of fundamental sense if the Fed can start to cut rates more than what markets are currently expecting. So I don't think that's too crazy. I really don't think that is too crazy. Mixed in there with negative sentiment around Tesla, everyone's freaking bearish. It's popular to be bearish. Like if you're bearish on Tesla right now, psh, yeah, <laughs> I don't think I need to elaborate on that too much. If, if you're super bullish right now, you're really the oddballs in Tesla. And I like that setup heading into tomorrow. I also just like the overall performance you've seen from Tesla over the past two days since the RoboTaxi announcement. Tesla stock was up 5% yesterday and up about 2% today. Now, what you've also seen in the markets over the past two days is this outperformance of the Russell 2000. So the Dow is down 0.36% today. The S&P is down a third of 1%. The NASDAQ is down about 0.2% today. But the Russell 2000 is up 0.06% today. What's interesting is yesterday, bond yields went higher by about five basis points. Russell shouldn't have outperformed, but it did. Today, 10-year treasury yields are down about six basis points. It would make sense why the Russell is outperforming today, and it is. So really, it hasn't even mattered what 10-year treasury yields have been doing. At the same time, you are seeing the VIX going up by about 3%. That means big money is going out or just retail for that matter, and they're buying put protection on their portfolios. Now, the VIX monitors puts to calls on the S&P 500. So when the VIX goes higher, typically on red days or before major events like tomorrow's CPI, uh, you tend to get the VIX going up. You tend to get more puts being bought on the S&P. Vice versa. After a major event or after, let's say, inflation comes in good, um, tomorrow, then you'll see the VIX fall again as people buy more calls. So even though there is more of a um, demand for downside put protection, the Russell is outperformed the last two days. That's a pretty good sign that inflation is going to come in good tomorrow. And I do think as well tomorrow on a technical basis is also going to be wildly important for the NASDAQ. Take a look at this 50 day moving average. The NASDAQ has been so Stubbornly, I mean, it almost doesn't get more stubborn than that. Finding support at that 50-day moving average, almost down to the penny on uh, April 4th and April 5th. Found support there, and April 4th was a really bad day. The uh, um, the Nasdaq was up 1%, ended up closing down 1.5%. And then you, you, you did bounce the next day. Um, and that bounce was pretty aggressive, about 1.18%. You've kind of traded sideways since then. If you fall under that 50-day moving average, if inflation comes in bad, then you're setting yourself up for you know a lot more downside. Again, because three months is going to confirm an upside trend in inflation, or markets are going to say, wow, maybe we're wrong. Maybe inflation's not going to be as sticky as we thought. Maybe it was all seasonal adjustments and we should go back to being super bullish. Let me remind you what the average stock was doing from November through late December. Absolutely ripping faces off, going from 15% of stocks above their 50-day moving average, which is basically like a crash. And, you know, from July until November 1st, the S&P went down about 10.5%, so that's pretty much what happened. And the percent of the stocks above their 50-day moving average went from 75% down to 15%. Makes sense. And then you went from 15% to 86%. As the markets expected, inflation is going to continue to fall. The Fed's going to be able to cut a bunch. Now you're at 57%. If that narrative starts to come back, then I could see a much broader rally. But in a weird way, you may out. You may see a huge outperformance of the Russell and not much of an outperformance at all for the S&P and the NASDAQ. That's because, you know, 
flip the script a little bit. What's done well in 2024 is semiconductors, seen as really bulletproof to anything the Fed does, anything the economy does. There's just been a lot of demand in that sector. Big tech, they're seen as bulletproof from the Fed, bulletproof from economic activity, even if they aren't, right? Even if they still could go through downturns and a recession, their business could get worse. I'm, I'm not saying they're bulletproof. This is what the markets have been saying. And they've flooded all this money into big tech. Because the Fed is not going to be cutting rates as much, because there's not much of a reason to own small caps and, and interest rate sensitive names. If inflation does come in weak and you now have a reason to own those names, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me to see selling in Microsoft, in NVIDIA, in some of those kind of stocks. So it wouldn't surprise me if the Russell has a huge day tomorrow and the S&P and the NASDAQ are up like half of 1% and the Russell's up like 3%. 4%, 5%. That's, that wouldn't be surprising to me. And, you know, mark my words, that, that definitely could happen. Now, specifically for Tesla, if we take a look at option activity today from hedge funds and institutions, you do have $167.12 million currently um, in option activity today with a positive order value of 57%. It did look like shorts um, at least are neutral now at one point earlier today, they were actually covering on short positions with about 500,000 shares uh, being covered. It looks like shorts are starting to take on more short positions than Tesla today with cost to borrow fees at about 10% now. You have 3.71% short interest of free flow, $17.76 billion currently in short positions. And, uh, uh, 102.66 million shares that are currently sold short. If I'm correct, inflation comes in low. It wouldn't surprise me if that's a reason for shorts to also cover on short positions. So with all of that information, let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Do you think inflation is going to come in weak or low? Do you think this could be a big positive for Tesla? What are your expectations for Tesla stock and for broader markets coming tomorrow? and the rest of this week. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you guys want to come trade with us live in real time, check out the trade that I have for CPI coming tomorrow. Yes, I put my money where my mouth is. If you were curious, check it out. Link down below in the description of this video. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.